Okay, so we're at the homestead today, and Jamie's getting ready to can a bunch of chicken. And a um, bunch of chickens butchered today. There's the jars. And that's what you're getting ready to do. Yeah. yeah. But in the meantime, we're going to go through this video here because guess what we got in the mail? It's the seed swap box from Go For Green Living. Uh, let's go ahead and sit down and show you what I'm going to get and what I'm going to put back in. Okay, so Southern Lady 44 uh, had the box just before me, and it's gone through a number of homesteads in the last few weeks. Started out by Go For Green Living, and I picked out a number of things I want to I take out of the box. Um, there was a lot of seed selections in here. You got parsnips and um, all kinds. You got spinach seeds. You got a number of uh, different types of okra in here. You have some onions that look like are going bad and spoiling. I may have to do some house cleaning before I send this package on to its next recipient. Uh, but uh, these look okay. But there was one in here that looked really bad and moldy and crummy. Anyway, uh, but a lot of these seeds look really good. You got some all kinds of bean options. You have all kinds of squash options in here. All kinds of you know crooked neck squash. And um, looks like that is some um, papaya. All kinds of different things here. Some black valentine beans. Just lots of different options. So I went through them all. I went through all the options. And, I mean, it was kind of hard to make a decision. But, you know, over the last few years, we've tried to really only grow things we know we're going to eat, things that we can preserve, that preserve well for long periods of time. And so um, what I took first off was uh, the black crowder. I took the black crowder beans that were in here, and I may only take half of these, I think, and then send the other half back with the box onto the next place, because I may only need about half of those. I don't know. I'll make a decision here in a little bit. But I'm taking the black crowder, I'm taking the Texas cream beans. I'm not sure who put these in. Um, I can't remember. I've watched a lot of the videos, but I can't remember who put what in. Um, but the Texas cream is what I'm taking. And then I'm going to take one of J&J Acres uh, Nana Roses, um, and so we're going to take that, and Tim said he'll find a place to plant it on the homestead. Um, you know, it looks like from the picture you put up, I think you, it, you put up a picture, a nice, big, beautiful roses. So we'll, we'll plant one of those, take one of those, and send the other one on, but there's one left. And then, Brad, I'm doing it. So I like spicy, spicy food. So um, we have, in fact, another family uh, who lives in the area now gave me a jar full of ghost pepper, uh, hob different types of habaneros, all crushed up together. It's a powder that we keep on our kitchen table, and we use that. I use that for any time I want to spice up a dish I'm, I'm eating, I use that. And so we will use this. We'll grow it and use it. I do like, this is a ghost pepper, if you don't, if you don't know. And so it's the boot jolokia, also known as the ghost pepper. Um, it did at one time hold the world's record for hottest pepper. I think right now the current record holder is uh, the Trinidad Maruga Scorpion uh, pepper, and it's hotter than this one. However, there's another one out there called the Carolina Reaper, and that one, they say, is reportedly even spicier than the scorpion pepper. Um, however, there's a caveat to that one. That one was developed in a lab. So the Carolina Reaper, even though it's the hottest pepper in the world now, is, was developed in a lab. Some guy paid like ten dollars or $20,000. You can find it online, all the information. He paid like ten dollars or $20,000 to develop it in a lab to be the hottest pepper in the world. So it's, I think it's genetically modified. But I think right now, this is no longer the world's hottest pepper. It's like, this, it's like third, maybe. Um, the Trinidad Maruga Scorpion, I think, holds the record. I'm not sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that this is like third place now. Anyway, um, we're going to grow it. I'll plant it, and we'll, we'll do some videos along the way uh, on the Jalokia ghost pepper. And uh, I'll show you guys how I start all of my pepper seeds indoors without any heating elements. I've been doing it for the last couple of years. works pretty good, so... Um, what am I going to add back? Um, I noticed that the, the supply of sunchokes was getting low, so I went out into my garden. There was only two sunchokes left in the box, and I went out to my garden and pulled up a bunch of sunchokes and uh, Jerusalem artichokes, the same thing, sunchokes, Jerusalem artichokes, and I'm putting that back in the box. I'm also putting in a restocking of 
the loofa gourd because there was only a few loofa gourd seeds left. And so I, I put a bunch more in there. And so I'll send those on. We grew loofas this last year. They did pretty well. And so I'll put some of those seeds back in the box. Um, I'm also going to be adding our famous popolo seeds. I put four packets of the popolo back in the box. This is great, guys. If you like cilantro, but by midsummer you realize that your cilantro has bolted and it's not really producing anymore in the summer heat, this is a great little plant. It grows about six to seven foot tall and uh, tastes almost just exactly like cilantro. It's called popolo. And the people in Mexico, Central America, usually are very familiar with this plant. Traditionally, if you go into a restaurant in, in some of those areas and some of those countries down south, they will have this as a garnish on the table already when you sit down at the table in a restaurant. So a lot of people down there are familiar with Popolo. Um, a lot of people up here are not, but it grows about six to seven feet tall. We've been growing it for the last three years, and it tastes almost exactly like cilantro, and it produces a lot of plant that you can use for all of your Mexican dishes. We can it in all of our salsa, and so I'll go ahead and include four packets of that inside the box. Jamie says, she's over here, you probably can't hear her off the microphone, but Jamie says it's really easy to chop because the leaves grow in such a way where you can just stack them up and then just chop them really easy. And so the popolo, uh, she says, is really easy to chop and prepare for eating fresh in your meals. I'm also going to include uh, the tobacco, some tobacco seeds. There's a guy down the road from us a little ways, and he grows tobacco, um, not really for smoking or anything like that or chewing, but he grows it for his livestock. And he gave me a bucket, big old bucket full of uh, uh, tobacco leaves that he had dried, and we're, we've been giving it to our sheep as a way to uh, use it as a medicinal product for worms and parasites, internal parasites. People have long said over the generations that tobacco, feeding it to your livestock is a great way to make your livestock parasite free and deworm your livestock. And so uh, we, we're going to start growing that this year. And he gave me a bunch of seeds, just a bazillion seeds in a little jar because the seeds are very tiny. And so I, I don't know, I threw about maybe a several hundred seeds in each pack. And so I'll include that. If you have livestock and you want to find an easy, cheap way to, um, to deworm them or keep them parasite free. If you've, if you've had those kind of issues, try feeding them tobacco. Uh, all you gotta do is just grow a small amount of it and then dry it every year and then feed that to your livestock. So I'll include four packets of tobacco seeds inside the box. I hadn't seen that yet in the box, so I'm trying to include some things I haven't seen yet in the box. So that's what I'm putting in. I do, like, like many of you guys, have my own seed vault and uh, lots of things in, inside here, things I've collected over the last few years. And uh, I'm always switching things out. I probably need to go through it and take some more stuff out of it. But um, this is my little seed vault. There's the tobacco seeds. There's just bazillions of them in there. And um, um, let's see, what else here? There's all kinds of different things in here. I'm going to, next, I was thinking about putting in some, uh, some sugar cane seeds. But I don't have, I, I'm not sure I yet have enough. I want to make sure I have enough to plant. So uh, I already promised Deep South Homestead and my neighbors that I'm going to give them some uh, sugar cane seeds and, uh, you know, so that they can have them. But I want to make sure I keep enough. But next year I will be, uh, you know, sharing, you know, in mass the sugar cane seeds that I have or selling them on our website and stuff like that. So, uh, and if you're interested in, a, in some of the seeds we sell, we have them on AmericanHomestead.com. Um, but where is this box going next? I decided to go ahead and contact Shalom Acres. Uh, we've had them on videos before. I'm going to send this over to Chris and Stephanie at Shalom Acres, and they're going to take it out, and they're going to see what they want to take out of this box. Lots of different amazing options that they can choose. Um, he has an amazing setup at his farm. He grows a lot of different things, a lot of different squashes. Um, in fact, he's given me some seeds of some of the things he is, he's grown, uh, but he's got an amazing setup there. And uh, if you haven't checked out his YouTube channel yet, make sure you go ahead and do so. But that's where the box is going next, and we'll, I'm looking forward to see what he puts in and what he takes out. All right, again, this is the box that was put out by Go For Green Living. Uh, you can watch, I think he has a playlist of all the videos over there uh, of all the people who've opened the box and then sent it on to someone else. So if you want to check those out, you can go over to Go, go For Green Living's YouTube channel and see what it's all about. But yeah, Brad, I'm taking you up on it and I'll keep you posted on how it all turns out. Okay. 
All right, guys, see you next time on the homestead. Hey, listen, if you liked our video, please check out this list of amazing folks. And uh, these are our patrons. They are the executive producers of our show. They help us produce all of our videos. We couldn't do what we do without them. And um, if, if, uh, if you want more information, you can go to patreon.com slash an American homestead. Other than that, check out these videos on the left. Uh, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on an American homestead. <laughs>